Professor Carlucci, I appreciate that uh, warm introduction. Uh, this is kind of a challenge for me as a speaker. I don't know what the other guest speakers have done here, but uh, apparently I have a little bit of just a, and I mean a little bit of, I feel like Jeff Kelly now, doing a little bit of latitude either side. So if it looks like I'm just kind of standing here in a box here, it's because if I move, then I'm moving out of frame. I am told, however, that I can move downstage, or we move towards the camera, we call that downstage, of course, the theater term. So I may go up and down a little bit, but no, no side to side. If you're wondering why I'm standing here, that's why. Well, well, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate that. I was just uh, speaking uh, a few minutes ago, actually, with one of your colleagues here, one of your fellow students, about the last time I was here, and I, and I think it was sometime last year. I'm not exactly sure when. One of the things about traveling for a living, as I do, is uh, the months and the years kind of start blending in together because I'm on the road so much. I'm starting to recognize towns, not by the town itself, but because I'm, <laughs> I recognize some mark on the wall in a motel or something. Oh my God, I've stayed here before because I just, so I'm walking by. So it's very strange, very, very odd. But I have been here today. Not many marks on the walls here, thank goodness. But uh, it's good to be back here at Santa Monica College. Actually, I was a uh, student at El Camino College. Anybody from Torrance, by any chance? Here, here tonight, Torrance, my hometown, Redondo Beach. I was a tennis player back in the day. That was, that's really my, that was my sport of, of choice. I played most of them growing up, but tennis was the one that I sort of excelled in. I remember coming out here playing Samo College. Uh, this is the 1990s. Very, oh, very good. Vikings. You guys are the Vikings. Okay. It's been too many years, I've forgotten, but we played you guys in tennis a few times back in the day. But other than that, I haven't been here in a long time, so it's a pleasure uh, to be back. As Mike was saying, uh, my background really is, um, as a broadcaster anyway, was radio initially for 10 years, and then another 10 years doing television weather. There wasn't really any sort of grand design, to be honest with you, and I think if you talk to most people in the business, with some exceptions, that's kind of the way it works out. Nobody really sort of, sort of ever sets out to do exactly what they're doing. Now, having said that, uh, the little light bulb that went off in my head is when I was in high school, I went to South Torrance High. Yeah, go Spartans. Uh, it was a few semesters ago. And we did this thing called Operation Hope, as I remember back in the days. And I was like the PA guy. It was my voice that was kind of like, uh, Mrs. Jones, your son is, is waiting for you by the flagpole. And so I remember some guy, it was like it, was like it happened yesterday. And this was like 40 some odd years ago. Oh, I just gave it away. And uh, I remember this guy coming up to me and saying, this honest and honest truth. Because at that point, I had no idea what I was going to do. I, I just I wanted to play sports. I was a tennis player, but there's a guy named Jimmy Connors that was better than I was, and the Austin brothers were all beating up on me and stuff. So I, I knew I really wasn't going to be a pro, but in my own mind, I thought I still had uh, hope there. And the guy said, you know, you should be on the radio. And it was like one of those light bulbs, boom. It was like, wow, the eureka moment. And from that point on, it was kind of like, what do I have to do? What line do I have to stand in? You know, what school do I need to go to? And so from then on, I mean, literally from that day on, it was like, okay, I knew I had to go. See, in my house where I grew up, my parents were educators. My dad had a PhD, sorry, from, actually it was an EDD, not that you care, but a doctorate from USC. And, uh, but he had an MA from UCLA, so he so had both schools covered there. My mother had her master's. So the, it's funny, I've talked to uh, kids about this uh, since then. And in my house, the idea of not going to college would be like you'd stop breathing. I mean, it wasn't really even a choice. Just everybody's going to go. But to be honest with you, though, I really didn't want to go. I wanted to go off to some long poke or something and get on the all night show and be on the radio because that's all I really cared about. But that wasn't really an option in the house that I grew up in. And so uh, I ended up uh, getting my AA at uh, El Camino College. And then I transferred to what back in those days, I'm not sure if this is still true today or not, but the school to go to for broadcasting, there are a couple possibilities, either San Francisco State, which you would have loved, or San Diego State. I ended up choosing the Aztecs. I went down to San Diego State, got my Bachelor of Arts in Broadcasting, and then went up to the Dallas, Oregon, got my first job in radio, left a girlfriend, left my MGBGT, all this stuff I left behind. I mean, I know, just play the violin. But you kind of have to do that, and all kidding aside, to get your first job, most of the time, most of us are not lucky enough to work in a major town like LA or San Diego. And so I ended up going up there and bounced around a number of different stations, um, Salem and a few other stations here in Southern California, but always kind of with an idea of maybe someday I could be on TV. It was just kind of this general sort of idea 
about being on TV. Now, get, granted, at this point, weather, nothing to do with it. Now, some weather guys that you see on the air, and gals, by the way, by the way, most of them are actually women now, so I say weather guys. We used to always refer to those weather guys. Most, in fact, most of the people on TV were men, actually, when I was growing up. But, but uh, thankfully, now, women are definitely getting into the game. And when it comes to weather folk, um, really more women, actually, now, I believe, than men on TV. And I, I genuinely think that's a good thing. At any rate, uh, the idea of doing weather really still was the farthest thing from my mind. I really thought in my own sort of bizarre way that at some point I'd be hosting The Tonight Show. I know, yeah, you have a hard time visualizing that. I understand that. But I grew up watching a guy who you may have heard the name but probably have never actually seen on the air except for YouTube. His name was Johnny Carson. So everybody that was a buddy of mine, we were all sort of, we thought we were funny, thought we were all comedians. We all wanted to be Johnny. Why well, he had a tennis court in his backyard, drove fancy sports cars. All the ladies thought he was really cute, and the guys thought he was cool, you know? So it was like, God, what's not to like? So the, uh, the Tonight Show thing, you may have noticed, didn't quite work out so well. But uh, what did work out, though, as a result, in fact, this is about the time I met Mike. I feel like I'm doing This Is Your Life for some reason. But yeah. about the time I met Mike, at, uh, have you told him about your Unistar days? I'm sure you probably no. mentioned some of that. Maybe I'll share that if you don't mind. I'll, I'll leave out all the dirty stuff. I'm joking. I'm kidding. I'll, I'll, it's, all, it's all clean. It's all family fun. Uh, Mike and I, I remember the, actually, I remember the time you actually walked into my studio. Uh, fortunately, the, the, I was not on the air at the time, but uh, he uh, walked in and we started chatting. I realized right away that, that Mike and I just kind of hit it off, similar kind of personalities. And all. We're both very shy, as you may have noticed, so we thought we'd make good friends. But no, Mike and I started talking, and at, in those days, People were telling me, and I'm going to start throwing out names to you, uh, one of whom is still on the air. Actually, I, they're both still on the air. Any David Letterman fans here? David Letterman? It's kind of old school, I know. Uh, Pat Sajak? Wheel of Fortune? Oh, yeah. Big, big, big Sajak fan. Nice, nice. Uh, Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune. There you go. Give that man the new Cadillac. The, yeah. the sedan is waiting in the back. We'll have it uh, driven over to you. During the break, we'll talk about that. But here's the thing. Those two guys have something in common. Does anybody know what that might be? That's right, they're, <laughs> they're both former TV weather guys. In fact, let's see, now Letterman didn't work at NBC. Sajak was actually a weather guy here in LA yeah. for several years actually, uh, before Merv Griffin, does that name ring a bell, anybody? Mer that's probably too old school for you. Merv Griffin, who is the, what was that? <laughs> no, <laughs> was he on Seinfeld too? I can't see, another Seinfeld episode I haven't seen. Oh yes, that's right, oh that's funny, I forgot about that. That's very, very good. Yes, the, I forgot about that. Everybody sets up a set in his room, living room. Yeah. That's pretty funny. I forgot about it. Very good. See, Mike told me you guys are smart. And he was right, by God. He was right. Uh, anyway, so Merv Griffin saw Sajak on the air, and he goes, oh, my God, here's the guy. Here is the guy for this new show, which wasn't on the air, on the air yet, uh, called Wheel of Fortune. So that's how Sajak got that. Uh, Letterman, frankly, was just terrible at being a weather guy. He had no desire really to do it. He just wanted to be on TV. And so, uh, he, you know, well, you know what happened to him. Anyway, so I thought, because in those days, uh, and I still kind of harbor, I, I have to admit this, sort of fantasies, I don't know what you, what you want to call it, delusions of grandeur of maybe having a talk show someday. But uh, it'll probably be on some little, you know, midnight, uh, middle of the night cable show or something. Or no, probably streaming online that nobody's watching except my closest friends. Anyway, um, in those days, I wanted to do a talk show. And people were telling me, hey, Sajak got to start this way. Letterman got to start this way. So what did I do? I went off and bought a thin little book on meteorology at El Camino because uh, I still was living uh, in Hermosa Beach, not too far from uh, the school there. So I got this little thin book, read enough to kind of talk the talk, really just enough to kind of pretend like I know what I was talking about. And, and Mike and I both had friends that were in broadcasting and all, and I rented a TV studio and sort of dummied up a tape. And um, in those days, it really was tape, actually. That was long before we were doing stuff on the web. So I dummied up a tape, and I'd been on radio, so I had the voice and all that. I'd done some stuff on, on camera. And so that's kind of how... All that uh, came about in terms of me thinking, oh, TV weather. So even then, TV weather was like a stepping stone to maybe doing a talk show. Well, you know, life takes funny turns. We, we meet our spouses. We start uh, having children. We have a mortgage to pay and all that. So the talk show thing kind of went by the boards. But in, if any of you are actually related to producers, no, I'm kidding. Forget about that. Um, so I, I'm probably not going to do that, unfortunately. But... Um, but, but what I have done, though, is I've done some, tel some TV weather stuff. So this is a long-winded way of sort of getting around to why I'm here tonight and why I hope, if I'm lucky, 
uh, maybe I'll give you some sort of insight into not just becoming a TV weather guy, because most of you uh, clearly want to do sports. I, I totally get that. And by the way, just digression. This whole speech, by the way, is going to be a digression, in case you're wondering. No, I'm kidding. But uh, uh, one, one other digression about sports, if I can. Uh, growing up as a kid, Mike knows this. Um, again, being a TV weathercaster, I, I didn't know what that was. I actually wanted to be a sports guy. My favorite announcer was Chick Hearn, Chicky Baby. Thank you very much. And, uh, of course, Vince Scully, too, even though I was always an Angels fan, but I, I really enjoyed Vince Scully and Dick Enberg. Dick Enberg, still one of my favorite announcers. Now is the voice of the... Anybody? NBC? San Diego Padres. Used to be NBC. It's a good guess. You, you guys should know that. We've talked about San Diego that. Padres. Show, we yes. Uh, unfortunately, he's, he's a little elder. Yes, yes, yes. So if I say Enberg, but you're right, though, about NBC. Give him partial yeah. credit. Uh, be, being a tennis player, uh, Wimbledon. He used to fly back to Wimbledon no matter what he's doing and cover Wimbledon. It doesn't do that anymore because of the Padres. But at any rate, uh, that's really wanted, what I thought I would do is be a, be a sports announcer. It sounded like fun. I you know, always played sports, so following sports. Uh, but, I, but I, again, because of that experience in high school, um, I thought, well, radio would be fun too. And, of course, when I was a kid growing up, unlike I have a 19-year-old son, and if I say, Ryan, uh, who are your favorite disc jockeys? He'd be like, what? What does that mean? Disc jockeys? What are you talking about? Now, growing up in, in, my, in my generation, uh, disc jockeys were everything. They were like, they were gold. I mean, they were like, they, they were Mr. Popular. And again, there weren't many women disc jockeys, unfortunately, uh, back then, almost all men. Uh, but so that seemed like a, a really cool career to have, so I ended up uh, doing that. At any rate, so started radio, got into television, uh, did TV for 10 years, again, as a weather guy. But what I'm getting back to here now, getting back to the theme of tonight's talk, which is... I guess I never did come up with a theme today. I'll, I'll think of one before we're done tonight. I'm kidding. No, we, we have a theme here. But at any rate, um, what we're going to be doing here tonight is talking about TV weather, not just from, hey, here's a, you know, here's a high pressure system or a low pressure system, and you don't care about any of that, but what might it be like to be on, say, a, a TV news team where you're working with a weathercaster, or you're a weathercaster and you're working with a sports guy. So I can talk about some of the sort of relationships that I've had uh, with team members in a, in a TV newsroom, because I spent 10 years of my life in a TV newsroom. Now, I didn't do much radio news. My radio stuff was always kind of personality, morning show stuff, whatever. Uh, but I worked with uh, sports people on the air and that kind of thing. So it's going to be sort of presented in that sort of framework. Now, the other thing I was going to mention was, what am I doing for a living? Now, I went back to school after I left television to get my master's at uh, Cal State Northridge. Matador, is anyone? And uh, so I did that, and so I, I, I got my uh, MA in Communication Studies, which is what I used to call public speaking. When I was at El Camino College, they didn't have a broadcasting department. In fact, they had no classes in broadcasting at all, which was really maddening to me. Although, in a way, I was very lucky, because what they did have was theater, English, and public speaking. And that's where I spent most of my time. And it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me in terms of my training ground because the English gave me the writing skills, which I want to talk about a little bit tonight. Of course, the theater naturally gives you your presence with an audience. And the public speaking gave me this ability, or at least began to help me, with thinking on my feet. And so what I've done tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I did what I might have done if I were to sort of put together, say, a speech when I was on the speech team, which is what I did uh, at El Camino. The toughest decision of my life was I had to decide between playing on the men's tennis team, and the coach wanted me to play on the team, or being on the speech team. I couldn't do both because they were both happening in the spring. And it was the toughest decision of my life. I still think to this day I made the right one. But it's very hard to give up competitive tennis, which I did in 1903, <clears throat> and, uh, and, and be on the speech team. It was the best thing I ever did. Uh, so I would encourage you. Uh, I know they have a speech team here at Santa Monica we used to compete against the uh, Vikings. And uh, if you've ever even given a thought about being on the speech team, a wonderful experience for you in terms of thinking on your feet as a broadcaster, in terms of projecting, and by the way, in terms of just teamwork. How many of you have actually experienced being on a team? And I mean any kind of a team. It could be sports. It could be, uh, I don't know, good. Uh, every hand on that. That's probably why you're in this class, right? Because you love sports, you love teamwork. So I'm going to approach, again, I, I, since I haven't played team sports in a long, long time, I, I'm pretty much approaching this from the vantage point of being on a news team, because that's what happens if you're in, in the television news business, whether you're a sports person, a weather person, reporter in the field, 
uh, whether you're an intern, whether you're a writer, producer inside the newsroom, whatever. So what I've done here is I've put together a little mind map. Any of you familiar with the mind maps? Do you do mind maps? Some of you probably do, maybe for other classes. And so I, I was really, it's funny, I was sitting up last night on glass of wine number three. I'm kidding, no, there's no, no, no alcohol involved. Uh, at least not much, anyway. And uh, <laughs> I shouldn't have said that, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, is this thing rolling? Oh my God, Elsie, you should have told me. I thought we were just warming up here. Um, okay, <laughs> delete everything up until now. Um, no, I was actually thinking about, well, what am I really gonna talk about? I mean, because there's so much, or maybe so little, I don't know and trying to think in terms of what would be interesting to you. I always try and put myself in the shoes of a listener. And I thought, well, one of the things I might be thinking about is just the standard mind map, five W's and the H, who, what, why, when, where, and how. And for those of you sitting in the back, or if you have eyesight that's poor like mine, you probably can't see this, but that's kind of what I did. And so I'm gonna kind of just go around the wheel here, so forgive me, I'll kind of riff on some of this. And I'm really looking forward, more than anything else, believe it or not, to uh, taking your questions about, about anything. So I hope, as Mike was saying, if you want to either get one in your head, maybe write it down or whatever the case, we want to leave ourselves plenty of time. In fact, truth be told, I wouldn't really be opposed if you want to just raise your hand while I'm talking, while it hits you spontaneously. So feel free at any time to raise your hand. Uh, but we will have plenty of time afterwards to do this. So let me just start with the, um, where should I start? <laughs> let me I used to take requests when I was on the radio. Uh, which W would you like me to start with, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, who, I like that, who? That's the only W I didn't spend a lot of time on because I hope that one's fairly obvious. It would be me, so who is involved here? That would be me. Let's try another W, another W, anybody? Good, a what? Now that's probably the one that I assumed you'd wanna hear the most about, and that's where I'll probably spend most of my time. And by the way, during the what, we'll get to the, uh, the demo reel as well. By the way, we have to have a name for this now. When Mike and I were in the biz, well, Mike, I guess, technically still is in the business in a way, but when he and I were in radio, we'd always talk about a demo reel. And so now, I don't know what we call them. They're not really reels. I guess it's sort of metaphorically a reel or whatever. But we've got this, I guess it's just basically a DVD that he's going to play of me when I was on the air at, um, uh, at my last, uh, last gig, my last, last station. So the, so the uh, by the way, did you, did you said the how, right? I forget who said that, but the how. So, or was it, did you say the what or the how? Oh, I beg your pardon. I, for some reason, I had my hand. He said, how? I, I beg your pardon. So the what? Good. Let's start with the what. So stand by the DVD. We'll hold off on that for a moment here. So the what then, very good, good place to start. When you are a TV weathercaster, you wear three different hats that I can think of specifically. Probably more than that, but three obvious ones. The first one would be your ability to understand, starts with an M, ends with a Y, Meteorology, meteorology, climatology. So you'd have to have at least some kind of training. Now, I, I came sort of in through the back door, so to speak, because I'd had a lot of experience as a broadcaster. So I knew enough of the terminology kind of to just, you know, to dummy up a tape and kind of get into the business. And the other nice thing about being a TV weathercaster, those of you that are actually thinking about going into this, nobody knows anything about meteorology, especially your boss. So when a news director watches your, I almost said your tape, watches your reel or whatever you want to call this demo, there is absolutely almost zero chance that they're going to say, oh, no, he doesn't know what he's talking about. He doesn't understand the science of meteorology. That's not going to happen. I mean, unless you're just stumbling all over yourself and you simply can't pronounce the words, which, of course, you know, what are you even, who are you kidding? But if you can actually say the words, you can probably get by making a tape, which is where I was. I mean, again, truth be told, it, it, you know, it's not a perfect world. So you have to know something about meteorology. I decided when I got my first job, anybody here from Bakersfield, B-Town, anybody? Bakersfield. Bakersfield Dodgers. Bakersfield Dodgers, they used to have a, was it double A Mike or triple A, I don't remember. Uh, single A. Oh, single A, sorry. Garvey started there, Lopes came out of there, but much of, I think uh, Mike Piazza might have spent yeah, a year there. Yeah. Early, early on. When I lived up there, they went into the Bakersfield, whatever the, whatever the team is called now. So I'm trying to keep the sports thing going here, trying to tie it all together. But um, anyway, uh, when I started in Bakersfield, uh, there was a point to this that I suddenly have lost. Uh, where was I on the chart here? I'm trying, no, never, I'm kidding. I, I was, uh, oh, I know the why, that's right, the why. Yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, there's meteorology. So, it was, right, so the Met, as we say, the Met, the meteorology aspect of this, when the, um, when the news director hired me there to show you how strange this business is, and I, I can only imagine this probably happens in the world of sports too. Um, I'm sorry about doing all these war stories, but I guess that's kind of why I'm here tonight. So Mike, Mike and I have a mutual friend. I don't know if it matters if I say who he is or not, but, but uh, our mutual friend uh, worked together in radio 
And Mike kept pestering me, and I do mean that literally, pestering me to drop a tape off up in Bakersfield where our mutual friend works because he knew someday I may want to apply for a job up there. Now, Mike knew this guy a lot better than I had only met him once on radio. We crossed over in San Diego at a station that both of us didn't work at very long. And so finally, he twisted my arm, and I finally went up there and dropped a tape off, whatever. So this guy left because he got a better job somewhere else. So he left, I mean, really left, kind of left. By that, I mean left the station hanging. Like, what are we going to do? So the news director has this tape on his desk. Guess whose tape it was? That's a good guess. And in those days, I had a little more of this stuff up here. And apparently, it's been so many years, I kind of forget what Jeff looks like a little bit. We have similar coloring, apparently. And so the news director looked at that tape, and he, and he, and he called the residents where I was living at that time. Because at that time, I literally had, uh, was all set up to go back to Mississippi State University. Bulldog fans, anybody? MSU, f number one in college football, yeah. I believe, to this very day. Is, yes, yes, you should know the MSU is the number one. Took out Alabama right a couple weeks ago. Uh, anyway, uh, good basketball team always, too. Uh, and if you go back to any of those schools really outside of California, with the exception maybe of Cal Berkeley and maybe UCLA, and possibly USC, but if you go back to some of these old schools back kind of east of California, you, you really feel like you're in some movie because, I mean, they're just, they're, they're old. And there's a real feeling of like the college life or whatever. Anyway, I went back there. Uh, the, uh, the chairman of the department really liked me. He was hiring me to be a TA, so I was all locked in. My, my then fiance, now wife, we were literally four days from yanking our stuff out of storage and driving back to Mississippi. Oh my God, what was I thinking? No, but I was really gonna do that. I was set because I wanted to study what they called broadcast meteorology. They had the only program in broadcast meteor meteorology in those days. And so I get this call from the news director in Bakersfield saying, we have an opening here. My guy just left. Do you want to start? I'd never been on the air. I had no experience. And now here this guy's asking me. I'd already kind of locked in at Mississippi State. I mean, now we can kind of laugh like, what are you thinking, Mississippi? But I mean, I kind of made up my mind. Have you ever done that before? You've made up your mind. You're kind of committed to doing it. Even in hindsight, you might kind of laugh a little bit. But it was like, I don't know. Then I started thinking like, well, gee, do I want to pay tuition? Or should I start getting a salary and actually start being on the air? So it took me a couple of days to figure this out, but I ended up taking the job. And so that's how I got my first job in TV. I had no business being on the air. I had virtually no experience. Had a little bit of an internship, which is another story I was going to share a bit later. Uh, it's actually down in OC where I, uh, I was really a little bit old to be doing an internship, but I had an opportunity to an, do an internship. Any KDOC fans here? Uh, they used to play, they used to be called the movie channel. Is that still on the air? I think it yeah. is. Channel 56? Yeah, it's, it's Channel 6, but it's like, that's on cable channels. It's, yeah, cable. It's still licensed as Channel 56. Channel 56. They, you're on your old TV. You used to do a lot of movies and stuff. I, I honestly haven't even looked at it. They probably don't even have a newscast anymore, but they had a newscast for a while there. This might be, a, by the way, and Mike's probably told you that if, is, if he has, it's good to hear it again. Um, Mike and I together used to watch that news show. In fact, Mike, I think you brought it to my attention first. Yeah, because you were doing voiceovers for him, I think, or something at that time. He said, do you realize their newscast has no weather person. The anchors just read the weather. Why don't you put a tape together and just offer to do the weather for them? Like, well, Mike, I don't have any experience with her. Just try it. Just, you know, Mike, he's like, just go for it. So I threw him a tape. Lo and behold, they liked the tape. Now, they didn't have to pay me because I had to sign this intern thing, but I got really good tape out of that. So some excellent tape that I was able to use later uh, to move along as I, I got into my job. So anyway, so the what is, need to be a meteorologist? You need to be a very good communicator. And of course, this would be true in sports as well, obviously. So you need to be able to have the communication aspect. Uh, but there's a third component to being a TV weathercaster. And I think a sportscaster, not quite as much, but certainly this would apply to sportscasting as well. And that is you have to be a good neighbor. Now, what do you mean by that good neighbor? What, what the heck does that mean? Well, if you're going to go into especially TV weather, Part of your job, if you're full-time, as I was, especially if you're doing, you know, if you're the lead guy on the, on the 5, 6, and 11, as I was for many years, um, you have to go out and give these weather talks for schools. And it wasn't like a horrible thing. I actually really enjoyed it. As you can tell, I, I like talking to people and students and kids and parents. And so you're constantly being sent out uh, in the morning hours to do these weather talks, whether it's a community group or a school or whatever. And that's just part of the deal. You're emceeing lots of things. Now, some of the folks don't like that. They don't like kind of that entertainment sort of function. I loved it. It was my favorite part of the job, actually. I used to ask 
the news director if he could send me out to one of those because I liked emceeing these things. And so there's that aspect to it as well. So you can't really, you know, unlike radio, where if you're a disc jockey or a Josh Dickey, as uh, Gary Owens used to refer to them, kiddingly, uh, a disc jockey, you uh, can kind of be anonymous when you're out, out and about. You can't do that if you're on television. Even if they don't like you, even if they hate you and think you're the worst thing ever, you know, on the air, they're going to see you. They're going to know it's you when you walk into the supermarket or whatever. So there's really kind of no hiding. So you have to, you're always sort of a, you become sort of the face of the TV station in weather especially. And that, by the way, that's true more even than the anchors because the anchors don't go out into the public nearly as much as the weather person does. Now, sports people do too, to be fair. You're off, you know, you're, you're uh, videotaping, you know, high school football or I say videotaping, so I'm so dated. But so you're out and about too, maybe doing scholar athlete, that kind of stuff. Uh, but the weather guy's always out there, so you are the face. Now, there's one other kind of hat uh, that you wear, too, and that is you're kind of the resident scientist. Whether you were a science major or not, and I wasn't, believe me, but if there's any story that comes up, like an earthquake or a tsunami or some sort of, you know, ice storm in Kansas or something, they're going to, you know, they're basically going to put an IFB, if you guys talked about IFBs, they're going to put this no. little thing, you know, it's a little earpiece, basically, that you'll see when I play my videotape and you'll see it, but, no. but I they'll, I mean, it's called IFB. They'll, they'll slap an IFB on you or you put it, put on your own, so you, have, you have your own, and they'll put a mic on you and you'll sit down and you're going to be the weather, you're going to be the, the scientist. So any kind of science story, you are always, virtually always asked to do that. Uh, and so um, there, there's the, all of those hats that go into the mix. But the one thing that I would say, though, uh, if any of you are thinking even about uh, just the slightest kind of whim about going into weather, is that, that you have to keep in mind that there is that communication aspect. It can't just be meteorology. I think it's great for those folks that have a, a degree in meteorology. I, I wish I'd had one. I almost ended up getting one anyway. It's another story. I won't bore you with all that. But it's wonderful. But if, you're, if you really are not comfortable talking to that thing right there, because this right here is a big member of your family. It's not just your two anchor people on the set. Got to be, even if you don't even like these people, you have to find a way to really get along with them. And of course, if you're the sports person, got to find a way to get along with the weather guy, but you have to get along with that friend right there. Because if that's not your friend, it's not going to work. So, so there's always, you know, two or three in the studio when you're doing the news, but you got to really develop a relationship uh, with the camera as well. So there's all of that. When you say the what, we are talking about those roles that you're playing. We would also say that, um, oh yeah, there's the other aspect about uh, being a TV weather person. Now, there was a day when I would have said, you know, you have to know something about computers. Well, now you would laugh. Of course, everybody knows something about computers, but there's a kind of a niche area, and that is, uh, even if you don't know something about them already, you'll have to become adept at using graphics because you essentially put your own package together, especially in the smaller markets. Now, you know, Fritz would have his own weather person. Dallas has his own weather person, has his own producer, actually, does all the graphics for them. But those are very rare exceptions. In most markets, you'd be putting not only your forecast together, but you'd be putting your own graphics together as well. And the best way I can describe it is it's basically doing a PowerPoint. You're kind of putting a slideshow together. The other aspect about doing TV weather is it's almost like you're doing an improv as far as public speaking. Because you'll get up on the set many, many times, again, in your earpiece, in your IFB, you'll have like maybe a four minute and 30 second weather cast ready to go. You've got it all figured out. You know exactly what you're going to say. And in your IFB, the producer's going to say, oh my God, we got a breaking story. You got to cut it, cut it down to 45 seconds. 45 seconds, from 4.30 to 45 seconds. So you're going to be able to think on your feet. And just the opposite can happen sometimes too. They may say, we're doing a 90 second cut in here. Then you get up in front of the, you know, the chroma key, the green screen. And you might hear, oh, God, we, we, we lost that live shot out there. The live, truck, live shot went down. So now that 1 minute and 30, Gary, you've got to fill to 4 minutes. So now you've got to figure out. Now, of course, if you're comfortable speaking as I am, those are the moments I actually enjoyed the most. I enjoyed that because those are the ones where I really got to think in my feet. It's very exciting. It's kind of scary in a way, but it's also very exciting. Uh, but if that's not comfortable for you, and it's not, for some, you'll have trouble in this business. And to some extent, Mike could help you out much more on this because I never did actually did do sports. To some extent, I think that may be a little true in sports, but probably not nearly as much as weather. The weather person's the accordion on the set. So what I said before would be what I would say again. If you had any inkling that you might want to possibly go into TV weather, great training for that would be any kind of speech in terms of improv. Or you're just doing an impromptu right on the spot. So you can expand it out 
or kind of squeeze it in because you really like the accordion. Now, let me put in my pitch here, and Mike and I talked about this a little bit uh, yesterday. Let me put my pitch in here for, uh, even if you have no desire to do weather, and I don't blame you, you just want to do sports and that's it, that's fine. Let me explain to you why it might be a good idea to at least have the ability, if you had to, to go on the air doing weather. In fact, I haven't told Mike about this because I thought about this last night and I couldn't think of his name when he and I were talking. There was a, a friend of mine uh, whose name I'd forgotten yesterday. Uh, his name is Ben Williams. I, I doubt he's even in the business anymore. But when I first met Ben, he, he actually had my job. In other words, he was the kind of temporary full-time weather guy at KION up in Monterey, which is my, I guess, third television, third and final station I worked for. Uh, ben was a sports guy. Really, but he knew enough about weather where he could get by. He could do both. And that's exactly what he did. There were often times when I'd get to the station, about 2.30 in the afternoon, and they'd say, oh, a uh, sports guy, I call in sick, so Ben's going to fill in. Or if I called in sick, Ben would fill in for me. So he really kind of created a niche for himself. There weren't many guys that I knew in the business. In fact, not many guys that I even know to this day that had the ability to do both. And the other good news about Ben was he's a very good tennis player. <laughs> so we played a couple of celebrity tennis tournaments, but that's another story altogether. Doubles partners together, a couple of tournaments. But no, Ben was a very good broadcaster and very good on the air. <clears throat> he could add live well. Again, he knew enough to get uh, about weather where he could put a presentation together on his graphics and sort of go on the air. He didn't know enough about the forecasting like I did in terms of you know how the models are set and trying to really put together a forecast and all that. But he was a huge feather. Uh, in his cap. So that would be one reason why you might want to think about at least kind of keeping an open mind on doing weather. Uh, because again, I, I, I don't want to, you know, be the guy with the wet blanket here today because I'm sure, you know, Mike has probably given you enough obstacles that you have to sort of go through in order to actually do this for a living. But there are so many obstacles. Uh, it might well be that the fact that you at least know enough about weather and be comfortable enough just standing in front of a chroma key like this where you could you stand with your clicker here, where you could actually sort of get by, and that might be your entree to actually getting your first job in television. It's, it's very possible. When I was at CSUN, I actually was working with um, the director of the news programming there. They actually have their own channel there. I would encourage some of you maybe to actually transfer up to CSUN if you want to go into sports broadcasting. They have their own <coughs> uh, uh, news show they do. It's Valley Cable, I think it's called. They have a full-on, I believe it's a weekly show sports, weather, uh, an anchor person sitting here, and they had me come in. I just did it because I enjoyed doing it. I was training some of their students in how to use the chroma key, and I kind of put together a forecast, you know, kind of thing. But uh, anyway, so that would be something we're thinking about. So that's the what. Did I leave anything out? I, I hope I didn't. So you would need to, of course, obviously the speech is important. Uh, body language is important. I hope by now, um, if you really are thinking about doing sports announcing, and if you think television, might be part of it, that you're kind of doing what Alcy and I are doing right now. And this is something you can do in your bedroom, your dorm room or something. I mean, just watching yourself, seeing how you behave on television. When I first started, my first you know, paying gig was up in Bakersfield. And I was known for staying uh, you know, long after everybody else has left. Not because I was some sort of you know, narcissist or something, but I wanted to watch the uh, videotapes, and they were actually on tape back in those days, but watching the air checks after the show to see how I did, to see if I can improve, to see if my gestures were too big or if I moved well and smooth and how are the maps you know, sort of being negotiated and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so that's the what. Thank you for asking about the what. So there's one W. Any questions about the what? Questions about the first W. So, we're, so far, so good. Thank goodness there's a big fan in here. and It's not Mike, but the uh, literal fan back here. That's very nice. Uh, how about another W? Anybody? Another W. Take your request. Another W. How about the why? Good question. And I'm sure you're wondering, why you, Gary Butterworth? You look like someone who has no talent. You don't look like you have a face for television. It's a great face for radio, but yeah, why? Why would you go into something like that? And that's actually a very good question. In fact, I'm, I'm going to riff off of this for just a moment because my 19-year-old son and I have been talking a little bit. And uh, by the way, I just learned yesterday what he's majoring in at Moore Park College. Moore Park College fans, probably not here. Uh, they, by the way, are the Raiders, Moore Park Raiders. Anyway, um, how many of you have a vision right now at this moment? I'm looking around the room now. Th there's going to be some exception to this, of course, but, but most of you are probably in the range of, I shouldn't really talk about age when there are women in the class. It's always dangerous. But I I'm going to say in the range of 19 to 25, maybe with a, an exception or two possibly. 
So am I, I kind of close? So, and you're, I know you're 19, that's why I didn't drop it to 18. But, um, but seriously, um, so how many of you right now have a vision of where you want to be when you grow up? And good, no, just be honest. If you don't, be, don't raise your hand if you, if you really don't yet. Okay, that's good. So maybe, Mike, what do you think? About half the class maybe? And that, that's fine. How many of you uh, not only have a vision, but your vision is to be on the air? doing sports somewhere, whether it's radio, TV, doesn't matter. But really, you truly have a vision of yourself. That's great. Uh, See, this is something I didn't know. I thought everybody was just like me. Because my vision that occurred into my head was when I was, what, I guess I must have been about 17 years old. I thought everybody had that eureka moment. Because I've been really getting after my son, Ryan, what do you want to do? Where do you see yourself going? And he has no idea. And as I've been sharing this story with many of my friends who are closer to my age, that I hang out with, they're like, well, I didn't know what I wanted to do at that age. That's what, you know, for, we used to call it junior college. That's what community college is for, to kind of figure out what you're going to do. So good for you. So, so half of you, you really have a good sense of where you're going. Uh, many of you may not even be thinking about going into sports casting, but you're in the class. So many of you, maybe you're taking the class because it kind of sounds like a fun career. It'd be sort of something that I'd be interested in learning. And for whatever reason you're here, I think that's great. The one thing that I would say, though, for those of you that do have that vision, I did see a number of hands that, that went up. Um, that's the thing, by the way, that will get you through your first job. Because if you don't have that, if you're kind of just thinking, I'll do this as a lark, or it'd be kind of fun, or it'd be a nice way for me to meet girls or boys, you know, whatever, or make a lot of money or be famous. I like girls. Uh, I, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I, had a, um, I had a number of friends like that in my first radio job, and they washed out very, very fast. And the reason why is, first of all, the pay is horrible, and the hours are awful, and there really is very little glory. Even those guys that you see on the air making a lot of money, it's not really a glory-type profession. It's, uh, it may look like it from the outside. So it, what it really is, more than anything else, is a ton of work. But if your vision is, I want to do that because I think I really want to like communicate baseball to some fans, or I really want to share my enthusiasm, uh, about sports, which was my vision as a little boy growing up. I could see myself being Chick Hearn or Don Wells or some of these other great sports casters back in the day, but that, that will carry you through. That will actually work for you. Um, so I would encourage you to, to keep reinforcing that vision. That's something I, that I've always done. Um, now, <laughs> God, I, I'm a horrible speaker. I, I, no, you know what it is? I have a horrible memory. What letter were we on again? You just told me and I forgot. Was it? What's your name? Oh, that's right, the Y. See, well, how can I forget the Y? Uh, 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 my name is Phil Henry. Thanks for asking. And I'm a uh, disc jockey who used to be on KFI. No, uh, so yeah, big bucks, fame, not going to work. Uh, desire to communicate. Uh, maybe love, how many of you just love sports and that's why you're here? I think that's fantastic. That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, there are a lot of people that go into uh, t- uh, 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 weather casting because they flat out love, love weather. I've worked with a number of people in the past who chase tornadoes on their vacation. Not me, no chance. Uh, I'd be down in San Diego uh, playing beach volleyball or tennis or something, but um, that's what they do. Hey, whatever, that's that's great. Uh, So if you love weather, that might be a reason to go into becoming a weather forecaster. But again, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be good because the aspect of being able to communicate your enthusiasm is the big part of it. So again, public speaking, theater, um, anything where you're actually kind of communicating to others, I think is wonderful. So the Y actually was one of the, one of the thin Ws. How, does anybody have a question, by the way, about the Y, though, before I glance off of the Y? Do you have a question about me or maybe a comment about something that I've mentioned about the Y? Like, why did we invite this guest speaker? Huh? This, this guy has nothing to teach us. And I, I, I certainly can sympathize with that. Uh, how about another letter? Oh, a question right here, ladies and gentlemen. Yes. Yes. If you don't mind me asking. Not at all. Oh, that isn't very... Oh, no, that's a, that's a great question. No, I don't mind at all. I think uh, it is the reason why I'm not doing it anymore. And I'd be honest with you, if, if I, I, you know, I'd be lying to you if I were to say to you that I haven't thought about maybe doing it again someday. It's never been strong enough to actually go into it again. No, it's a fantastic question. Um, I, again, I don't want to be the wet blanket here, but you know, most people that see someone on television, as I was for 10 years, would, would look at that job and go, wow, that's awesome. You're on TV every day. You know, people, everybody knows who you are. And, you know, and if you're working, especially in a smaller market, not so much in the bigger markets, believe it or not. This sounds kind of counterintuitive to say that. But in the small markets is where you're a star. 
it's hard to be a star in LA, even on the stations here, because there's so many other things to watch and do. And, you know, so you're some guy, you know, doing weekends on Channel 9. Well, I, oh, there's so many people on the air. Uh, no, the reason why I stopped is, and I hate to even say this, but it actually became a job to me. Um, I was kind of known as Mr. Live Shot. I did a number of live shots over the years. And again, you know, keep in mind now, I didn't go into television weather casting because I love weather. I learned weather and I got my little seal, NWA, National Weather Association, two years of rigorous training, a lot of late nights studying uh, at my you know, dining room table with my head, you know, clunk, hey, in the popcorn bowl as I'm trying to read my text or whatever. But yeah, a lot of work and I got my seal. So I was, I was a straight up, what they call a broadcast meteorologist. Many stations tried to promote me as, as a meteorologist, I wouldn't let them. And that was out of deference to other uh, of my compadres out there who actually had degrees in meteorology, even though I was very close, just a couple classes away. But again, ethics, big part of me, so I, I wouldn't let them do that. But, but broadcast meteorologist, I'm, I'm okay with that because that's technically what I was. No, it became a job. It actually became a job. And I got to the point where I would go off and do a weather talk, kind of like I'm, what I'm doing right now, and I, I would drive back to the station afterwards from the school, and I'd be like, man, I'm so jazzed up. This is awesome. I'm feeling so pumped up. And then I'd go into my weather center, at the station, which is usually in some isolated little room, or if you're in the newsroom, you know, you really are a one-person band. You're all by yourself. It's funny, the, the one thing about weather that's unique, unlike sports and especially unlike the news team, is nobody knows, pardon my friends, nobody knows what the hell you're doing. They just know that somehow you put these weather casts together. They have no idea how you do it or what any of the science is or what all those words mean. Nobody even knows what high pressure means. They've done surveys of us over the years. But the problem was, I would get into the station then. I'm all fired up about 2.30. 3.30, I still got a little bit going, and then about 4, I'm kind of losing that edge. And I'm throwing my weather cast together, and I've been to a staff meeting now, and it's kind of like, let's see, oh yeah, we got the 5. And, and I realized there's something wrong here. What's going on? What is it that I'm missing? What's going on here? And what I was missing, can somebody help me here? What was, what was I missing? Yes, because, I remember, too long. well, that's true, but thanks for noticing. No, that is true. You know, you're right. But there's something that the weather talks had that a TV, have any of you been in a TV studio? How many of you have been inside of a TV newsroom, seen a newscast being produced? Been right, good for you. There's something that you normally don't see when the weather guy's on the set. Have you ever seen the weather guy kind of do his or her thing, whatever? Uh, what's missing that a, that a classroom does have? A live audience. I don't know why it took me 20 years, ladies and gentlemen, to figure out that's what was missing, a live audience. That's what got me into teaching because I realized, you know, my parents were teachers, but that, that didn't really have a lot to do with it. It probably did on some subconscious level. But I wanted a live audience. That was Johnny Carson. Carson's show was taped, but it was a live audience. And so if you flopped, you would know that. And if it worked, you would hear it. The problem with weather was, I would get someone saying, hey, Butterworth, you know, like, I might not even know him, some viewer, man, I love that live shot, all that shot, they buried you up to your neck and said, oh my God, that was great. I'm like, oh, well, when was that again? Oh, you know, three weeks ago. Oh yeah, three weeks ago, yeah, yeah, three weeks ago. See, for me, that, that's way too long, right? I want that boom, 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 I want that. I want that hit right now. I want to get that immediate feedback. And you don't get that. By the way, you don't get it in radio either. Now, radio is a little closer because you've got the phone there. Actually, I guess they don't have a phone anymore. Mike, I don't know what they haven't been inside a radio studio in a long time. But we would get, you know, could take requests and talk to the audience and all that. Uh, but you didn't get any of that. But in a, in a classroom with a live audience. Now, by the way, I actually tried to get a live audience up in Monterey. And I was this close to getting it sponsored. The, uh, the actually, not just the news director, but the general manager was getting excited about it. And the last minute, they decided to bail out. I was going to actually... They're, I don't know how we're going to do this logistically, but they're going to bring a live audience in just for my weather segment. I mean, it's, it sounds bizarre, but I knew at that point when that was taken away from me that I, I really at some point had to leave this because I just, I had this hunger for working a room, working a live audience, which you don't have. Thank you for asking. That's actually a very insightful question. And that's the other thing I would say too is, I know many of you right now, those of you have a vision of going into sports, I think it's fantastic. Hope you never lose that. Uh, and, and some people, uh, we, we just mentioned a few names earlier, like, like Vin Scully, Dick Enberg. Some actually have this vision maybe as a kid growing up, and that's what they do the rest of their life. But, but unfortunately, most don't. Most end up, you know, getting into something else. So the other thing you might be thinking about, and I know you're, you're probably thinking, oh, God, who's grandpa here telling me about 
what I'm going to do when I'm in my 30s or God forbid in my 40s, whatever. But you might be thinking about what are other skills that I could learn right now that would actually help me as a sportscaster, but might also be useful, useful to me later. And so, again, I've already mentioned a couple to you. One would be writing. The skill of writing is very important, even if you're just doing, I shouldn't say just, because that's, that's minimizing what Mike does, and I shouldn't do that. But uh, even if you're not really doing so many scripts, but just the ability to write will help you in the newsroom. It might actually help you get a job in a newsroom. And then you wait for that sports guy to come down with laryngitis, and you're ready, because you've already talked to the news director. It sounds crazy, but this kind of stuff happens. So the ability to write, the ability to speak and think on your feet will help you in, in many uh, different areas. But uh, again, appreciate the question. How about another W? Another W? Uh, or, or an H, because we could roll the DVD, too, which I'm sure is coming in. Please. So you don't get nervous, like, talking in a 20 people in front of you or anything like that? That's, a, again, a very good question. I do. No, I do. And it's not because I'm a neophyte, because I've been doing this for virtually in my entire adult life. Uh, I, I did, uh, theater and, uh, did theater in my undergraduate work at San Diego State, and I was on the speech team uh, at El Camino. So I've really been in front of audiences from, say, about, oh, I don't know, uh, what would that be, like, from about 18 or 19 on. But you know what? That's a great question. I still get nervous. I was nervous before I went on tonight. In fact, the longer the introductions, thankfully, Mike's introduction was relatively short. What I'm doing, when, and I'm serious about that, because when, when I do what I do now, Sometimes because I fly around the country doing these one-day seminars on communication skills. And every now and then, because they used to want me to send me their bio in, my bio in advance. I don't even want to do any of that because they wait, we heard you're a radio person. Yeah, it's true, but I, don't talk about that. You know, if that emerges and someone asks me, I'll answer it. But I don't, I don't want to rest on my laurels. I want them to either you know, see I've got some skill or not. It can't be because of some piece of paper somebody's reading. So I've asked people to keep the introduction short. But every now and then, some group insists on reading this long introduction, you know, talking about all the things I've traveled around the world and done all this other crazy stuff. And though as I'm sitting there, the longer I sit, I get really nervous, because then it's like, oh my god, that means I have to be good. <laughs> Who is this great guy you know, you're pumping up? So yeah, I do get nervous. But the day that I don't get nervous, and I'm quite serious now when I say this, the day that I don't get nervous and I'm being introduced is the day that I should stop being a professional speaker because that means I'm so full of myself that I'm just phoning it in with you. Like, oh, are these people? These are just a bunch of junior college kids, whatever. Yeah, I didn't plan anything. No, I was up half the night last night actually working on this. That's out of respect for you, by the way. That's not me. It's not to pump up my ego or something. Who cares about me? It's just you're going to forget about me at, uh, you know, 1036, you know, after, after the class is over. But it's, no, it's out of respect for you. It's out of respect for the audience. So the other, the other thing about having the vision then, it's the vision is kind of a two-part. It's, um, yeah, it's, you know, I could see myself doing it, but the reason why I'm doing it ultimately is I want to share my enthusiasm with an audience, you know, kind of thing. So again, great, great question, great question. Um, does anybody want me to get into the how? Yeah, the, yeah. Go, thank you very much. I'm kind of, that was sort of leading the witness uh, counselor, I know, but uh, the reason why I'm saying that is I know Mike over here has just got itchy fingers. He wants to play the how, play the DVD, and the DVD actually ties in with this. Now, when we do play the DVD, I'm going to ask him to occasionally pause it and even fast forward through some of it, because even some of this, and by the way, um, if you haven't figured this out already, you will absolutely, Mike's probably already told you, you will hate watching yourself uh, being played back and hearing your own voice. It's just very common. I know, nobody ever really ever, you kind of just get used to it. I was watching this last night for the first time in several years, and I cringed. I went, oh my God, am I really going to play this? But, but the reality is, you know, it's, it's, I, I'd like to think it's still fairly good, but you always think about how you could have done it differently. So the how is, um, I'll tell you what we'll do. Why don't we go ahead, why don't we screen this? Because it very much ties into the how, and you've been so, you've been very patient with me sitting there, and most of you are actually still awake. I'm kidding, you're all still awake. And uh, maybe we got to screen this, and then maybe, oh, oh should I get out of the way? No. All right. Oh, all right. Uh, do you want to do this? Yeah, should we should do the Wait, DVD. Before we uh, sure. <laughs> He's listening to KFI right now. It's 664. This is the Giants game. By the of way, course. Five four Giants, by the way. Oh, listen to this. My um, goodness, that's wild. Uh, do you have enough tape? Yeah. Yeah, we got the... Uh, no, I mean, do you have enough tape in there? Because I know it's going to run up. We got 12 minutes. Why don't we yeah, chuck you, the tape out? And yeah, you won't need it for this. Yeah, because yeah. we're going to... Yeah, sure. you're going to need it for this. Sorry. Right. So let's uh, take a quick... Should I stand next to you? Kind of give you a little, little uh, like, here, stop it here, speed it up there, or whatever. All right, I'll get out of your house. I'll stand over here. Because I, I may actually talk over this a little bit and ask so him to. Want me to hit it now? Sure, sure, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we've got to wait till he's Oh, that's right, yeah. Maybe check the, uh, check the, you can check the audio if you want to see if the audio is good. Oh, audio will be fine. Okay. Um, yeah, what's this thing's on? 
Oh, you're, oh, I see you. Right the gain right there. So bottom of the sixth inning, Giants 5-0.